now I have the, the difficult task of um, following Jeff, who helped us to connect to each other. Um, my job is to help us to connect to the deeper um, vision of the conference, at least from the perspective of me and consciousness hacking. My name is Mikey, by the way, and I'm uh, the founder of Consciousness Hacking and one of the many people helping to put this event on. So, thank you. Oh, wow. If I get, if I get applause for just saying my name, this talk is gonna be easy. Okay. Um, a number of years ago, I was at a uh, Science and Non-Duality conference and I saw a talk from this gentleman, Rick Doblin, the founder and head of MAPS. And, wow, you could just applaud for anyone. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And, uh, and in the beginning of his talk, he was framing his deep why, the deeper motivation behind the work that he does bringing uh, psychedelic therapies into the world. And I was struck because I was coming from a very different field of technology, transformation, and consciousness. And his why was the exact same as my why. And he had a quote which perfectly articulated it. And for those of you that have seen me give a talk, it'll be familiar because I use this quote all the time. It's um, from the United Nations. It's the first line of the UNESCO Constitution. And it says, since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. Sometimes I wish that the gendered pronouns here were more modern, and then other times I think it's quite appropriate. Um, <laughs> um, and so for me, what this points to is not only the capacity, but the necessity for inside-out change. An approach to change that um, looks at the external conflicts that we see in the world as a reflection of internal conflict. And that a way to change the world is by changing human consciousness. How many people in the room share a similar perspective? I had a feeling it would be, it would be most of us. Actually, hands up again and looking around and just notice who's here with us. This is our, this is our community. And so how do we do this? How do we change human consciousness? This conference is about bringing together um, what we believe are three of the most important and potent toolkits for doing just that. Psychedelics, technology, and meditation. But this is not just a conference from bringing um, people from these separate silos together to have a conversation. Every speaker, every discussion leader, and many of you in the audience are actually already bridging between these areas, already breaking down the walls of these silos. And the the belief behind this conference is that the bridging of these worlds, the bringing of them together, um, what results will be greater than the sum of their parts. That through collaboration and through uh, creating new tools that comes from this intersection, that we can create new ways of supporting transformation, awakening, and inside out change in the world. And we've got a lot of cool examples here this weekend um, at the intersection of uh, psychedelics and tech. We've got folks like Robin Arnott that are doing um, psychedelic VR experiences uh, at the intersection of meditation and tech. There's a lot of stuff. We're going to hear from Adam in just a few minutes. He's been doing a lot of work with folks like Jack Kornfield. We've got the Muse headband. We're going to hear from Ariel, the founder of Muse. In the upper right, um, the intersection there, we have as one example, meditation and psychedelics, we've got an incredible unpanel for you, um, focusing all around that topic with some of the world's leaders. And um, when I look at this Venn diagram and I feel into my excitement, why am I really here? What am I really motivated by? Um, there's a deeper, a deeper question, a deeper curiosity that comes up for me. It's this question of how good can we really get as a humanity in supporting transformation and awakening on the planet. 
Because for me, this is actually not a conference at a deeper level about psychedelics, technology, and meditation. This is a conference about taking a beginner's mind at the ways that we can create new tools and new approaches to supporting the deepest evolution, the deepest experience, the deepest connection of humanity. Um, and, I, and I often, I come from a tech background, and so I often think, what would it mean to take the best of what science has to offer, the best of what technology has to offer, the most innovative, creative minds, the best of Silicon Valley, the best of Bhutan, the best of everything. And often when I get excited and I start riffing like that, I get some resistance in the crowd. Uh, very understandable resistance. This sense, this sort of uneasiness of, wait a minute, are these shortcuts? Are we missing something important and fundamental to the path? Are we going to be creating unintended harm in our effort to support humanity in a deeper way? The short answer is yes. This has been true for thousands of years. Every practice, every technique, every path has both unintended consequences but also known limitations. And also, we will pursue this in ways that are out of alignment with life's natural rhythms, in ways that are forced, in ways that are trying to get us somewhere that aren't coming from the state of consciousness that we're trying to produce. And that will also produce harm in the world. And so these are things to be wary of, but it doesn't mean that this isn't a skill that we can't hone and develop. And it doesn't mean that it's actually not a vitally important skill. How many people in the room are facilitators or teachers or creating some sort of transformative product or in some way supporting people in this way? Please raise your hand. How many of you go to talks, go to conferences, read books, go to school to try to hone your craft? to try to become better at what you do? And how many of you have noticed that you've actually improved over time? So there's a name for this. In um, Buddhist traditions, it's called upaya, translated as skill and means. And a longer translation is skill and means is the ability to bring out the spiritual potentialities of different people by statements or actions which are adjusted to their needs and adapted to their capacity for comprehension. In other words, learning to meet people where they're at. Or in my Silicon Valley translation, wisdom plus innovation equals skillful means. And so I'm going to reframe my deeper question, which isn't really a question. It's more of a, a, a koan, because I don't think that there's an answer to this. But in a way, this has become my guiding curiosity. And when I think about this, two things come up. One is the recognition that our capacity for skillfulness is a reflection of the experience that we embody. And the second that comes up is this new, new thought I've been playing with. It's more of a feeling, which is perhaps this process of developing our skillfulness as a humanity is actually an alignment with the force that we call evolution. So my prayer, my hope, for this time together, for this group here at this conference and beyond, is that we can come together and support each other in aligning to the deepest wisdom, love, compassion, and care for humanity, and evolutionary impulse, so that we can, in turn, create the most skillful means that humanity has ever seen to usher in our awakened futures. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>